Hi everybody, Tiffany Solorio here for Live with Prima and welcome to another video. I'm going to be sharing with you how to create this art journal cover using some patina paste, rust paste, the new opal magic waxes, just a lot of different mediums and I hope you guys enjoy. I want to quickly just say that I know that the audio quality isn't the best, but some of the steps I felt needed a little bit of explanation instead of just adding the text to the video. So I hope you guys don't mind and hopefully soon I will get a better mic for you guys. But I am using the denim art journal from Finnebear. It is wonderful and it took well to all of the different mediums and sprays and everything that I put on it. So to add some texture to the art journal cover, I'm using some light paste and this stencil here. And I will have all the supplies used in the description below. But I use light paste, I feel like it's a little bit more airy and I just like the effect a little bit better than modeling paste. But you, of course, can use modeling paste um, if you like. And I'm just adding it randomly on the cover. I just, I want it a little bit um, peeking out uh, from all of the other elements I'm gonna be adding to the cover. I like to take some extra paste and just kind of smooth out those harsh lines from the stencil. It just helps things blend together and flow a little bit better. Um, it's a personal preference. Uh, you could do what you like. But now I'm adding some white crackle paste and I'm adding it pretty thick because the denim is going to soak up a lot of that moisture. So I want uh, the cracks to be um, pretty big and so when the spray and the different mediums uh, get in the cracks, it will help uh, create a lot of depth and um, interest for the art journal cover. To get the best results from the crackle paste, you want to let it dry um, naturally. You don't want to use a heat tool. Uh, you can and I do sometimes, but um, when I really want a lot of cracks and just the best effect uh, possible. I let it dry and it takes a few hours but it's well worth it. After the crackle paste dried I am now adding some heavy gesso and I'm just kind of pouncing it on. I don't want a you know a really thick layer of gesso. I just kind of want it just to everything to flow nicely and um, to have all my mediums and everything um, work well on the journal. After the gesso dries, I am adding two layers of the Glistening Waves Color Bloom Spray. You can see here I sprayed on, and then I dry it, and then now I'm adding another um, layer as well. So after the Color Bloom Spray has dried, this is when you're going to add your lace, uh, all of your different embellishments to create uh, the look that you want for your art journal cover. I am using mainly all Prima products. I use a little bit of lace that I had in my stash, but um, this is where you can add just random items, uh, paper clips, bottle caps, just anything that you want on your art journal cover. So get into your junk drawer, pull out a bunch of different items and just glue them onto your journal cover and see what you like and what you don't like. You can add as much uh, metal pieces and lace and anything that you want. And I love that about mixed media because it's all personal preference. It's really just up to you and what you like. There's no right or wrong and um, just have fun with this uh, journal cover.
For this step, I am using light paste. You can also use 3D matte gel if that's what you have on hand. Uh, just something to where the mini art stones can stick to and you want it to be really strong because uh, the mini art stones need to stay in place and after you add um, your sprays and other uh, different paints and stuff. So you're going to add your gel or your paste uh, where you want your art stones to stick to. You kind of want to add it a little bit thick uh, just so you can kind of press in those art stones once you sprinkle them on. You can also mix together light paste and the art stones and I do this also um, you'll see in a little bit but um, it just gives a different effect and different look when you add the art stones on top of the gel or the paste uh, instead of mixing it all together. So you can see here I'm adding the mini art stones. There is also regular art stones are just a little bit bigger. Uh, you, I add both and you just want to sprinkle them on and then shake off the excess or you could just press it into the paste or the gel, um, whatever you're using to adhere those stones to your project. So here I added some crackle paste, uh, light paste, mini art stones and the regular art stones. I don't think the crackle paste did anything in the end. I was just doing it out of curiosity and just to see if I can get a different effect. Um, but I don't, it, it, I didn't see any cracks um, after everything dried. But um, you could try it out, maybe have a different uh, outcome than I did. But you could see I'm scraping on um, the mixture onto my project where I want it. I'm not adding too much of the art stones and uh, mixture onto my project. You can add as much or as little as you want. Uh, when you mix the art stones with the, the paste, you can add as much or as little art stones into the paste as you want. Uh, the more uh, bumpy, I guess, you want uh, the texture to be, the more art stones you want to add to the paste or the gel medium that you are using. After all of the paste dries and you want it to be completely dry before you add any more moisture to this project, uh, you want to add your color and I am using again glistening waves. I love this color. You can also use soft teal if you want. It's a similar color. Uh, this one is uh, deep teal and you could see I'm just trying to add it to where I want some depth on my project. If you want more control of where your color is going, you can also use a paintbrush um, to add the color exactly where you want it. I wasn't really wanting to be precise, um, but uh, you could see here I'm adding a little bit of water just to help everything flow together. And I just continue to add color here and there where I feel like it needs. Um, it's all up to you again. <laughs> After the Color Bloom spray dries, uh, you're going to add your patina paste and this is the turquoise bluish color and I just add it randomly where I want a little bit more pop of color.
So I am using some rust paste and I added um, a little bit of water to some and I'm adding it to my project with a, uh, just a little paintbrush. And you want to be careful, you don't want to use a really expensive paintbrush um, with the paste because it, it is really gritty and it will uh, mess up your paintbrushes. So I just use basically the same one over and over and um, so I don't have any problems with ruining any of my brushes. But anyway, so I added some water to the rust paste and then I'm just kind of painting it here and there wherever I want it and then I'll go in and add some more water where I had put the rust paste so that it could just kind of blend out and uh, have that uh, color bleed a little bit. It's very pigmented and I really like that because then you can get a lot of um, blended effects and here I'm just using a baby wipe to blend out uh, some of that paste as well and I'll go in underneath different embellishments um, and just different areas where I want it. Um, right there in the center I'm going to add a little heart and I wanted it to look rusty under the heart. So I'm just going to add more rust paste to my project and you could see again I just add it here and there and underneath different um, embellishments and uh, I just go in and add water but I'm just gonna just play some music and let you guys watch the process completely happy with all of the rust paste that I added and the color bloom sprays I let it dry overnight and then this is where I'm going to add the opal magic wax and this highlights um, a lot of the embellishments just perfectly if you were to use this wax on black gesso it would show up a lot better but I just wanted to have a little bit of highlights here and there and in the photos you can kind of get a little bit better uh, look at that but this Opal Magic Wax is so wonderful I don't even know how to explain it um, I know Finnebear has videos on her YouTube channel uh, showing exactly how to use it but I just use my finger just rub it on some of those raised areas to highlight some of those details and all of the different um, embellishments that I added. 
When adding the wax to your project, you don't want a lot on your finger or your paintbrush because it'll just kind of clump up. You just want a little bit and a little bit goes a long way. I am going to be adding some of the wax with a paintbrush now and I just very lightly just run the brush over um, the areas that I want to highlight and again it just highlights those raised areas when you just kind of brush over it um, lightly. If you are new to mixed media and you're a little hesitant to give it a try, just find some paints and just play along and uh, find techniques that you like and um, along the way you'll find what you don't like and then eventually you'll just be creating mixed media projects all the time and you'll fall in love with the process and I hope you give it a try. So that basically completes the project. I just love how all of the different mediums just kind of go together and you can create a really unique project. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Be sure to uh, share this video if you like to and be sure to find uh, Live with Prima on Facebook and that's where you can um, ask me questions and share your projects with us and if you do share your projects, be sure to tag us on Instagram and on Facebook. And I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys later. Bye.